Welcome to episode one of the Franciscan Zoom series. Andrew Kapp is here. We have a very special guest, one with a very esteemed resume for his young age. Major League Pitcher, 2017 IL Pitcher of the Year with the Indians, and also a recording artist. Welcome, welcome, Mr. Stephen Brawl. Thank you very much. I, uh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, it's, you know, we all got basically nothing to do, so... Why not, right? <laughs> it was a long line of list of people wanting to talk to me. We let you cut the line because of uh, because of the credentials. So. Yeah, I'll tell you what, being episode one uh, is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Not hey, gonna lie. Someone call it the pilot episode to see if it gets renewed. So no, no undue pressure. Right, but, right, uh, right. You've had an extraordinarily busy off season uh, being up until now. Uh, but it actually began, the work on this project actually began two weeks after the regular season. But exciting news for folks that don't know, you are now a official album maker. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, I met with a producer uh, from L.A. named Lauren Harriet, who worked with uh, like Bronson Royo and Bernie Williams on their albums. Um, and he approached me about doing a Broadway album. And I love Broadway music. I love Broadway shows. So I was super into it immediately and um that was in spring training of 2019 um and then throughout last year we kind of went back and forth on choosing the songs and then uh this you know 2020 off season is when we really uh did all the the actual work but it was a lot of fun a lot of work too you said i, th I think i read somewhere you you started it two weeks after the uh, the regular season ended there in 2019, so was that something you did uh, you did locally out in California, or did you do it back in Pittsburgh? Yeah, I so he's from LA, so we did um, the first week of recording like all the instruments. We did that in LA, and that was about a week, and then I did about a week that was actually back in San Diego uh, for the lead vocals. So it was split up, but um, yeah, it was a lot, but it was it was fun and. You know, that's the time when we're not doing baseball work or we're supposed to be relaxing and letting our bodies recover. So it, timing was perfect. Well, it's uh, available on Amazon Music, Apple Music as well. You can also listen to it on Spotify. I had a chance to check it out. Uh, you sound wonderful, by the way. But uh, we'll, get in, we'll get into more some of your more uh, fun musical exploits. And you've certainly had a lot of them uh, even since uh, your, your playing career not just with the Pirates, but uh, before your Pittsburgh days as well. But uh, something that was really cool uh, this past spring, you had a chance uh, to, to go to the symphony orchestra there in Pittsburgh and actually perform on stage. You had, uh, you had some of your teammates there in attendance as well, some former Indians. I saw uh, Josh Bell's Instagram video. He was all super excited. I heard you sounded great, but that, uh, that had to be a fun experience there to be on stage. Yeah, it was amazing. Like all the singing you can do in studio and everything, it's great. And like, it's awesome to have an album that you can listen to and everything at home. But the actual uh, act of performing is just so much better, honestly. So getting to be on stage and sing some of the songs from the album, um, with a, you know, one with a full symphony behind me in general, but two, the Pittsburgh Symphony is well known as, you know, one of the best in the world. So um, it was really, really cool. And they were super supportive and nice. And the other performers, um, the other singers were great. And I mean, it was just such a cool experience. And it was just like, you know, we had a show Friday, a show Saturday, a show Sunday, and then I flew straight to Florida for spring training. So it was a quick turnaround, but it was cool. Well, I heard that uh, that they wanted you to do an encore. But you actually, uh, you actually had to get back down uh, to Pirate City. So hopefully, uh, hopefully there is a next time, and maybe uh, maybe you'll get to do the, uh, your encore then. Yes, that would be that would be ideal. But uh, looking back on your music career, I know it was something that that you know when you were here, you first got to the Indians in 2016. That's when you made your major league debut. Um, that was something that really was was always prevalent um, in your in your professional career. The backstory on kind of how that got to be the, the marriage of music and baseball is uh, is pretty unique. Um, you, uh, I consider myself to be an NCAA aficionado. I had not heard of Regis University um, until uh, until I met you, but uh, they allowed you to play not only hit and pitch with baseball, but they also let you take your uh, your musical career uh, very seriously as well. Yeah, it was the only school that would let me, so that's why I chose Regis, and that's why I will love Regis forever. Because, you know, I actually sat down with the head coach of the baseball team and with the music director all together uh, during my visit to basically like explain how it was going to work and like how we were going to make it happen uh, with all the time constraints. So, um, you know, a lot of other schools won't let you do it because the time constraints are virtually the same. 
So there was a lot of time I had to miss baseball practice for shows um, or rehearsals. Sometimes, you know, had to miss some, some rehearsals for games and stuff. So it was just kind of always a back and forth, but everybody was super cool about it and very helpful. So um, I, I went there specifically, specifically because I didn't want to choose yet. I wanted somebody else to make the choice for me. And then I got drafted. <laughs> so I was like, all right, cool. Now I'll go play baseball. So, yeah. Well, I think that was the amazing thing for me was that, that you dominated on the diamond. You were a very good hitter and uh, obviously a fantastic pitcher. And uh, I was surprised that it kind of almost became a – that it was a surprise to you when uh, when the Baltimore Orioles took you uh, took you so early in the draft. Oh, it was a huge – well, I had never talked to a scout in high school. Um, and then when I decided to go to the small Division two school, basically pro ball was kind of – so from my mind, I was like, all right, I'll play four more years of baseball and then I'll start this music career and we'll see where that goes. Um, so yeah, it was a huge surprise. I just, you know, I kind of grew up a little bit, started throwing harder, got a new pitching coach who's awesome um, and actually started working out for the first time in my life. And uh, things kind of turned around for me, uh, but it was definitely very unexpected. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was cool. I'll, I'll never forget the day I got drafted. You know, I was in Minnesota playing summer ball. Uh, I was with my dad and my brother. We were watching it. I just took the laptop up to the TV. Um, it was right at the beginning of day three, the 11th round. And uh, they didn't call me before they drafted me, so I had no idea it was going to happen. So they just said my name, and I was like, wait, whoa, I got drafted. So yeah, it was cool like a legitimate reaction as opposed to some of those rehearsed ones we saw uh, we saw in the NFL when they already they already knew what was happening right you already know it's gonna happen yeah but uh it, that that connection has kind of stayed with you um from from your moments at Regis and even before Regis when you're in high school all the way up to now and uh, I, I know pitching can be so it can be so mental and I know you need a break from that especially between starts you were a starter for the majority of, uh, of 2019 and I know that's something that you prefer to do but does music offer you a, a bit of a, a refuge or, or an escape especially in the season and uh, in between starts yeah and I think it does for a lot of people I know because I actually perform music um, it can be seen as a little bit different but really like there are so many guys that do the same thing I do like it's it's a you listen to music uh, as a way to get you know pumped up for the game or you listen to music as a way to calm down from a game, or if you're especially frustrated at what happened, you listen to music to help you get out of that frustration. Um, so I, I like to think that uh, it's nothing its nothing special what I do with music, but I do, I can guarantee you that I listen to much different music than a lot of the guys on the team listen to, because you know, I'll be in there listening to show tunes because I like them, so, so there, you know? Uh, and I can listen to myself now if I really want to feel uh, cocky and self-centered. I can just listen to myself before I go on the mound and be like, yeah, yeah, I can sing too. Nice. <laughs> you have your own, you have your own channel on Spotify, which I, I think is just simply incredible. You have your own artist page. I think that's like the sign that you've made it. Yeah, I think so. I didn't, you know, the funny thing is I had nothing to do with that. So it just like <laughs> showed up and I was like, Hey, look at that. I can search myself on Spotify. I'm not connected to it at all. So I can't even like go edit anything if it's wrong or anything like that. I, I don't even know who has access to that or if Spotify just made it. I don't know how that works. And to kind of wrap up the, uh, the musical portion of our schedule, and then we'll dive real quick into, uh, into the baseball. Uh, I, I think the thing that maybe made most people outside of the realms that have followed you the last couple of years aware of your, uh, of your multi-talents, you actually sang the national anthem before a Pirates game in uniform which I, I find simply incredible how was that experience for you yeah it was cool I've actually I've done it twice now I did it in 2018 and I also did it last year um, and I plan on doing it every year you know who knows what's going to happen this year but um, it's a it's just something that I find fun and cool uh, I've, I've always I used to sing the national anthem for like college basketball games at Regis and um, I don't know I've always enjoyed singing it so I figured you know I I asked, I, I approached the, the Pirates and I was like, hey, I don't know if you guys have any interest, but, you know, I, I would love to sing the national anthem for a game, like if you'd be okay with it. And so I had to uh, go ask Clint for permission. Clint Hurdle was manager, obviously, at the time. So I'd ask him for permission and he said, yeah, that sounds good. Just on a, you know, on a day you're not starting, yeah, you can do it. 
And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. That's fine. Uh, so I had to do an audition just like everybody else. Uh, and I like to think that I did well, I obviously did well enough because I got to say it. So second uh, time. It, so yeah, twice, but it was super nerve wracking the first time. Like everybody was staring at me, like, you know, my teammates <laughs> and the other team, you know, like what is going on right now? And, uh, and then they're all pretty happily, you know, surprised. And now they understand that it's more than just a hobby. It's actually, you know, something I do. So. Well, you obviously sing very well, but we, uh, we know for a fact that you pitch very well as well. In fact, you had, uh, at least in recent memory, one of the more dominating seasons um, in uh, Indianapolis Indians history. Uh, you look back at your 2017 numbers. I don't know if they sent you a physical trophy. I don't see one on that shelf back there. But uh, no, the I, 2017. I got like a, like a piece of paper and I got okay. a, um, I got a watch. I got a watch. Okay. Yeah. If I, if I remember correctly, I think the watch was actually from the Indians, not from the league. So yeah, I'll have to get on the, the league Indians. and get you, get, you a nice, get you a nice trophy. Yeah, uh, I feel like I should get something. Get. Like, I have a ball, but, like, that's a I, – I took that. <laughs> I, I mean, it'd be cool to get <laughs> commemorated it in some way. It's commemorated in the Pirates Clubhouse, too, like, you know, Pitcher of the Year for 2017. Yeah, a little – yeah. We'll, but it's we'll very get, small. We'll work on uh, – yeah. I'll be I'll be in Dublin, Ohio, hopefully here soon. So maybe we'll get uh, we'll get the league to print you a, to make you a trophy. But uh, you had one of the best seasons in Indianapolis Indians history on the mound, especially when you consider how evolved hitting is. And I know that was the year before, or two years before the uh, the major league ball came to AAA. But regardless, ten wins, a one point nine four ERA. You had had other good seasons before that season. You had made your major league debut actually the July before that, July of twenty sixteen. Uh, but do you feel like uh, that that season in 2017 was what kind of catapulted you to the success that you've had in the, in the big league since? Yeah, you know, that was easily the most fun season I've ever played. Uh, 2017 in Indianapolis, Andy Barquette was our manager. And I was so sad when he left after that year. He went over to um, to the Red Sox. And I was super bummed because he was incredible. He was all about making sure – you know, the players were like having fun, you know, and even when times were tough, like not letting the frustration get to you, but realizing like we got tomorrow, all that kind of stuff. Um, and he was just like, we started the season, I think like eight and 16 or something like that. We started off poorly. And then like we had another team meeting and we all thought, all right, here it comes. Here comes the, oh yeah, no more fun. Now we have to win. But he got up there and he's like, guys, like, I understand we're going through a rough patch, but like, we're not going to continue going through this rough patch. So we're, we're, we're going to win a lot of games. Like just keep having fun. And I, I think it like, everybody was like, Oh man, he's like serious about this. Um, and then we ended up, you know, destroying the league the rest of the season. And um, yeah, I had a, I had, I had a pretty good year that year. And I think a lot of it is attributed to the, the clubhouse attitude. And, and I, I got so close to a lot of the guys on that team and um and I loved it. I loved that year so much. I, I, we had a guy named Josh Lindblom who is now signed with the Brewers, but he came over from Korea the year before um, and he was playing with us. He was with us for a half season and halfway through the year, he decided he was going to go back to Korea. Um, he got an offer. So we, he had a team meeting. I'll never forget this. Like he's like up there and like tearing up, giving a speech about how much he's loved playing with us as a group and how much like he feels like he had grown. And we're all crying. Like this is mid season of a triple A year, which doesn't happen. People don't build relationships like that uh, very often. And so I'll never forget that year. I mean, it was absolutely amazing. The thing that stuck with me was uh, we had that great comeback in game three uh, Joey Terdoslovich, who was one of the, the key cogs, both uh, on the field and in the, in the clubhouse as well. Good old Turdo. But yeah. uh, he had the big go-ahead hit in game three. Unfortunately, game four of that playoff series, Durham did win. And I remember going into the clubhouse because that's always the day. Um, there, there had been, I think, a couple of guys that went up with September call-ups, but they let the rest of everyone else stay there. And you had guys that had just learned that they were going to go to the big leagues, some for the first time. You had a guy in Dan Runsler who hadn't been in the big leagues in a couple of years that learned he was going to get learned was going up, but it was almost like this, uh, like this sense of finality. And it just showed how close everyone was on that, uh, on that 2017 team. 
Yeah, I haven't played on a team like that before or after. I mean, like we have we have a lot of guys that are very close and we're good friends, but the uh, like the amount of of players that we had all pulling on the same rope, which is so cliche and lame, but that's the best way to describe it. We're all, you know, working together, <laughs> supporting each other, going the same direction. Um is unbelievable. Like in a especially in a minor league team where most of the time a lot of the time a lot of guys are just looking out for themselves because they're just trying to get to the big leagues. Um, so that was, it was so different than anything I've experienced. So kind of moving, moving ahead to today, um, you're, you're, you're in the rotation last year outside of a handful of games uh, in the bullpen and uh, at Pittsburgh had their fair share of struggles injury wise last year, but uh, you were kind of that steady force in the rotation uh, and, and they gave you the ball every fifth day. And it seemed like you got strong, as the season wore on and uh, it, it almost was like once that role was cemented for you as a starter and it wasn't so much a question that you really kind of took it and ran with yeah I've always liked a little bit of um, routine a little bit of confidence you know I I, I knew before that I didn't have the confidence of, of my you know my coaches my manager it's just the way it was because uh, I hadn't performed you know to their liking up to that point and the thing that was frustrating for me was that it was just kind of like, I feel like if, if I could just get like, just give me like five starts in a row, like where I can get back into the routine of doing it, I think I'll be solid. And the only reason it happened last year is because we had so many injuries. And, you know, it's one of those things where I was finally given up to they're like, look, we have, you know, Jamo's out. Like we don't have guys coming back for however long. So it's like, you're in the rotation now. And I don't even know if it was like a, you know, it was more of like a, oh, here you go. Like, <laughs> don't screw it up. And, uh, and because it like I, a white smoke papal ceremony or anything. No, like definitely not. Um, but because it was, you know, I could finally get in a routine, it, it did work. And I, I finally put together a good long stretch of starts, like a lot in a row, you know, like 13 in a row with a, you know, two, four or year eight or something like that. Um, and then I got hurt sweet and then I gave up 10 runs against the Cubs awesome so like it's funny how you can have because I just didn't have that many innings so when you have that one blow up start which everybody has every year the difference is that you know if you have a lot of innings it doesn't affect you as much um, and I have just gotten my ERA like like it was like a three four. I was like feeling good, and then it like jumped up to like a five four or something like that. And I was like, well, that was fun while it lasted. Um, but you know, it's that's all part of the game. So I, I who knows what's going to happen this year once again. But uh, but I like starting, and um, we'll see we'll see what what happens. Yeah, if you take out the, just those couple of starts, like you mentioned, especially that one at Wrigley uh, against the Cubs, uh, your ERA was like somewhere like 3.3, 3.4 for the year, which is uh, incredible considering, uh, you know, where we're at offensively uh, in yeah. the game. But uh, last question before we, uh, before we let you go, Stephen, I, I know you had a chance for a few weeks in spring training to kind of get to know the new staff, but uh, I've heard great things from, uh, from a number of Indian alums, not just with Derek Shelton, the new Pirates manager, but also uh, some of the new uh, coaching staff members as well. Yeah, I mean, we've we've lucked out. It's unbelievable. Uh, Shelton's amazing. Um, it's weird saying Shelton. We call him Sheltie. Sheltie's amazing. Um, we got Oscar, who is our pitching coach, Oscar Marine, and he is fantastic. Um, and one of the things that we're doing more now is we're using the analytics uh, more effectively. Uh, so before, you know, the coaching staff was just from an older generation, and that kind of stuff wasn't really a huge part of what they did. Um, and now we're using it more. What's cool is being able to um, take the numbers that everybody was getting. And Oscar um, is very good at knowing how to apply, like, all right, how do we, we need your, you know, spin axis to get better. How do we actually make that happen? Because you can't just like start throwing like this, you know, it doesn't work like that. So it's always coming from your legs or from, you know, it's from somewhere. And he breaks down your delivery and shows you, and it's amazing. It's really cool. Um, and then, you know, we just uh, – I, I wish we could have spent more time, you know. That would be nice. Uh, but as the season gets going again, everything's going to be fantastic. I know that. Well, Stephen, thank you so much for, uh, for taking the time to be our, our pilot episode of this, uh, of this Franciscan Zoom series. 
Apple Music, Amazon Music, also his very own Spotify page as well. Stephen Brault, no stage name needed. Stephen, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Kappas.